Alrighty, so season 7 of All Stars, the all winner season, from what I could see in the comments of my videos, constantly had people disagreeing with the outcomes, with the format, with the judging, and so on. So I thought, what better time to do the unpopular opinions video than right now for this season? Joining me today is one of my supporters on Patreon, who's done one of my prediction videos back in the spring with me. Yeah, remember that? Why did I do that? J Mold! Are you ready? Uh, as ready as I think I'm ever gonna be. Some of these are gonna be wildly unpopular, but oh uh, well. We're kind of used to that from me. <laughs> <laughs> we did just talk about this a, bit, a little, but how did you enjoy the season? Well, I sort of like stopped watching halfway through and then just like watched about four weeks in one sitting. When half the queens you can count out from the promo first, so it's a bit like, well, you know who the top four is gonna be out the five queens that probably stand a chance of winning. So who was your favorite, either like going into the season or while watching it? My favorite was the Vivian. I didn't really like the Vivian on Drag Race UK, but I think once she got off the show and she started showing herself a bit more in like a better light, that and she became my favorite, but also Shay as well. I don't really know why I've like had a love-hate relationship with Shay Coulee. I still stun her. But before we continue, I just want to give a special shout out to my new patron supporters this week, Brandon Brown, A period, and Lady Catrice. I'm sorry if I mispronounced that. Thank you all for joining and helping me out. If you cannot join my Patreon, you can always like, comment, and subscribe, and especially for this video where we're discussing unpopular opinions, I would love to hear your takes on some of the stuff that we talk about here. We're starting off with the casting. The opinion here in this comment says, All-star winners should not have been cast. Their spots should have gone for queens like Priyanka, Lawrence, Carmen Farala, and Peru, etc. If Aquaria, Violet, and Sasha did not want to be in the season, they should have asked the international queens instead of all winners. What do you think? Well, I think that the all winners is meant for the people that RuPaul is judged. So that's why I think that people like Priyanka and Carmen Farala and Envy Peru probably will not be in the season unless if they're on versus the world but yet again would they allow winners to go on versus the world so it's a bit of like a fine line really personally i would like to see priyanka or carmen farella on any season because i was a supporter of them on their original season but unfortunately i don't think it would ever happen i mean i uh, did not watch canada's drag race season one at least and i obviously did not see what priyanka did on that season but watching anything she did afterwards i was like you're fantastic. You're amazing. I want to see more of you. And Carmen, I just stand from day one. Yeah, I would have loved to see them on there, but I do assume that they wanted to keep it like RuPaul seasons for the all winner season. And it's a little tricky because the three all stars queens that I cast, I do think that there is validity in casting Trinity and Shay because you can make an argument that they could have won season nine and they both made it into the top four. So them winning all stars was kind of inevitable in a way but Monet is the only one that I was like you know should she be here I mean I'm glad that she was after watching the season but her casting is maybe the most questionable especially with them also not casting Bob Chad Michaels you know I think when going into the season you knew there was going to be a twinner storyline so I think that's probably what led me to think that well it's obvious that Monet and Trinity will have to resolve that in the lip sync Lala Perusa at the end of the season I mean I was fine with the casting I did want more regular season winners but mm -hmm. now i guess i'm fine with it i'm fine but i just prefer if it was just a bit bigger size queen <laughs> <laughs> the next one reads i think evie should have been top two episodes four and five as in episode four she had to perform in boat sketches and in my opinion was funny in boat and she had to me the only memorable message in episode five this whole this person should have been top two because i found them funnier is a little tricky because that is more or less how Drag Race judges also, but I don't know, I think Evie being in the top four is quite enough for those two episodes. Mm. What do you think? I do not think that Evie should have been there, but I think who would have been there? There weren't many uh, funny people, and I think that Evie did something that was at least out of the box mm -hmm. to have her be in there in the top four in episode in episode four. But for episode five, obviously, you know, when they did the drag creation speeches and everything, the point 
isn't necessarily always to like, oh, I'm going to go into this really seriously. And yes, Evie's message was very good and everything, but we're watching a TV show that's supposed to be entertainment. That's why there's so much of a focus on comedy, you know? Obviously, funnier things will get more rewarded. I did think that for that episode, the top two should have been Jinx and the Vivian because the Vivian went last and that's like with the first spot, the hardest spot to go. And she just killed it. I know. I mean, I, I don't want to come across as supporting the Vivian just before because she's from the UK, but I think she, going on to this season, knew that she might not stand a chance at winning because she would just get the foreign queen at it. Like, she knew that she wasn't going into there to win, but maybe just, like, to show off how talented she is. Or get some money for once. Next opinion goes, Stop blaming queens for the poor production and finale format. At this point, it almost feels like an unpopular opinion to say that the Jinx deserved to win the season. The first one... Obviously, you shouldn't blame queens for production shenanigans and just, like, the format differences. And do you think that Jinx deserved to win the season? You've got to be a bit naive to look at the cast and go, well, Jinx will either storm the season or she'll just fall flat on her face. So I think it was fair, It was very clear that she was either going to do well or do bad. So when you watch Snatch Game on episode two, you sort of think, yeah, she's going to be there. But when was the last lip sync? of the season ever meant someone deserved to win because he's always just reserved for person with the best track record. Exactly. So like Aldo Monet did better. I'm not annoyed at it because we all knew Jinx was going to win anywhere. Absolutely. And I watched yesterday the podcast, Sibling Rivalry podcast that they filmed right after Monet found out that she was cast and they were going over like who could be there. And both Monet and Bob were like, Jinx is your biggest competition. Do not underestimate her. So like going into mm -hmm. the season, people were like, it's going to be Jinx. On the season, everybody's like, it's gonna be Jinx. And then because of like three minutes of a, not even three minutes, like maybe a minute and a half of the last episode, people are like, no, J no, not, no, Jinx, no. It became popular for people to root against her. No, of course, yeah. And yeah. Like... Moving on to the next one, this comment reads, I think this format of less queens, maybe up to 10, and all queens staying the whole or most of the season should be the way they do all stars from here on out. What do you think about this? <laughs> Eliminations and drama make the show interesting. My favorite season was seasons with a lot of chaos. And this season, the Vivian was just a bitch for one episode, and then it was just resolved immediately. Yeah. When no one goes home and you don't ask the question, who do you think goes home? Everyone's like, kumbaya. So yeah, maybe this should be about like 10 queens because All Stars 6 was a bit excessive with 13 because mm -hmm. it just felt like a normal season. They should go back to eliminating people. If not eliminating episode per episode, at least have like the person that did the worst kind of be disqualified. Well, not disqualified, but like not be eligible to compete in the next episode. I don't really like it when there are more than like two episodes where no elimination happens because it's like you're not progressing the story. However, exactly. Regarding the format, we also have this one that says that the long runtime hurt the season so much. The lack of eliminations made the story progression much less noticeable. The amount of filler they have to include to get an episode and an untucked makes the season feel that much more stale. That's part of the reason why no modern seasons will dethrone the best logo seasons. The last sentence, absolutely, do you agree with? I mean, I agree mm. with everything else here. <laughs> I mean, when you have a season that is longer than a lot of the people who are there, because it's eight queens and it's a 12 week season obviously everyone's gonna win an episode but if everyone's gonna win episode that's just four episodes if they would have shortened it down to eight episodes fine just keep it there yeah totally because it, now it's like yeah. everyone's getting four stars five stars and they're shit at the bottom of the pile with one and so they have to introduce a big twist of getting three stars so then she might actually have a chance it gets to a point where you have to do back flips over yourself because of how long the season is that you need to just make sure that no queen feels invalidated because what at the end of the day what's the point of staying there that long if you've got no chance of winning yeah exactly and if we look at this season we've had the storyline of monet which i think was really well done actually and it did help that it was eight or nine episodes a span of a sea of, of a storyline where you know she was more strategic she wasn't really winning but she was doing well and then she started winning by the end whereas what are the other storylines like the vivian and jinx having like a two episode storyline at best and that's it 
<laughs> I, like what? I couldn't even tell you what it was about. I don't know. I just don't think that the show getting so many episodes is good for the show because they're not good at giving us long seas or season long storylines. Mm -hmm. And regarding Untucked, I I miss the old Untucked. And when I say the old Untucked, I mean like seasons one through let's say nine. Mm -hmm. That Untucked was so good. And even like season seven, when they changed up the format, that was some of the funniest shit on there. <laughs> exactly. I stopped watching Untucked maybe after season 12 because season 13 just really just like ruined the show for me. I just thought it was on for so long and no one went home. And uh, the Untucks never really happened because season 13, one thing happened, which was Candy and Tamisha. In season 12, there was one thing and it was Heidi and everyone attacking Aiden Zane. And then in season 11, it was just Evie getting annoyed at someone breathing. <laughs> so it's like once you pass season 10, because I think season 10, that's when it, it didn't like start going down. It started rolling down the hill of how bad Untuck got. <sighs> Let's move on because the format and Drag Race is just it's hurting me. headache inducing. So this next one goes. Jinx was a solid third best of the season. She wasn't that funny in this uh, in any other challenges but Snatch Game and Trinity did the best in the season. Monet was the you know second best kind of. Hmm. Jinx won six out of the eleven challenges they could win. So it's like you can't really say that she was the third best. Like out of push, you could maybe yeah. just say she was second because she wasn't as consistent. System. But when you win the majority of the challenges on a season, hmm. Yeah, I'm not buying it. I can buy Trinity and Monet being in the top three best performances, definitely, but they would be like below Jinx. Exactly. <laughs> Change the order. Do you think that the top three of the season are Jinx, Trinity, and Monet? No. I think Jinx first. Monet based on consistency and mm -hmm. I would say Raja just for the sole fact of she is from a much older season and she's much older than them so the fact that not only did she keep up with them and by the end get as many stars as she did but she was also consistently good as well and she was maybe for me most of the time top three top four so just missing out on the star trinity and raja maybe third or maybe putting raja third and trinity fourth raja is the only queen that never got blocked she asked to be blocked exactly all right so let's move on Jada not making the top four was the best outcome for her. I don't want to imagine what the fans, in quotation marks, would have done to her if she had made it when Shay, Monet, Trinity, and or Raja had not. Yeah. I'm just loving the quotation mark fans because <laughs> it's just true. I will be honest here. I looked at the promo for her and I counted out Evie, the Vivian, Jada. Evie's not going to win because she's not really that popular out of everyone that's there. The Vivian's foreign and Jade is too new. So I agree. This next one is about the final lip syncs. This person thinks that Monet won the final lip sync. Do you think Monet won the last lip sync? And how do you, or who would you have said did better in all of those lip syncs? We're talking just the top four, by the way. Monet won. And I think it's obvious that they didn't want Monet to win when they edited out her pulling Jinx's lipstick out and then putting it on. And the fact that they also didn't focus too much on the Nikki rap as well. Mm -hmm. You know that they were trying to focus it towards it. I like Shay versus Jinx. I love the choreography for Judas, but it doesn't work when there's not people behind you. It's less effective. Mm -hmm. I think Jinx probably deserves to want light win, but not by a, a mile. And then Monet and Trinity, I mean, like, I knew Monet was going to win when I saw what Trinity was wearing. <laughs> <laughs> that, true, yeah. For Trinity versus Monet, I was like, wait, shit, Trinity's killing this first part. Oh no, oh no, oh no. <laughs> and then, you know, Monet obviously beat her in the end, so I was like, okay, cool. Then Jinx versus Shay. So Drag Race does have this thing of, like, do not do the choreography or do not do what the original performer of the song does because that's not you, that's you impersonating somebody else and we don't want to see that. So mm. the moment Shay started doing the choreography, I was like, no, bye. For that exact same reason when Monet started doing the... What's that dance move thing from Swish Swish? Is it Flossing? I think so. Yeah, I played sure. Fortnite once and I think I've seen that name before. <laughs> I'm showing my age here. When she started doing it, I was like, no, Monet, no. Like now you can kind of rationalize her quote unquote losing that lip sync, even though obviously it never matters. But I was so bored with the edit of the last lip sync that I was like, can they both get eliminated? Like, <laughs> I, just, exactly. I was just like, no. This is when, no. This is when we uh, get to eliminate people. This next one reads, Trinity 
was heavily favored by production for the first half of the season when they thought she could have feasibly won, but then they stopped after it was apparent that the Jinx was unbeatable. I think that for the first part of the season, Trinity did get more positive critiques. I mean, everybody got positive critiques, but more positive critiques than everybody else and more higher and top two placements than everybody else because they were doing the whole... Monet versus Trinity storyline. To have Trinity be strong in the first half, Monet in the second half, so that they can kind of equate the two and then have Monet beat her in that lip sync in the end. I think that it was quite evident that Trinity was very, like, in the episodes for the first half of the season. But I think it was just because, like, they wanted to show what blocking was mm. and how it affects. And because she won the episode, it was like, oh, well, she's blocked, so now this happens. And then, so just to make sure that you're aware. But yeah, I think she was in the episode a lot. But to say that she was heavily favoured, mm, I didn't think that she deserved to win the Snatch Game, but I can see probably why. The design challenge, yeah. But then I think she wasn't really favoured apart from that mm. towards the end so yeah and i like the notion that they put here that like that jinx was unbeatable because yeah the next one reads the three star twist made sense there were too many queens with two stars by that point and something needed to be a tiebreaker and she deserved her spot in the finale in the top four i think people forgot how close she was to a top two placement most weeks but just missed out i'll let you have this one first <laughs> this is not fair yeah three stars three the only person that affects is Shay, because if if it was two stars, it would be fine for everyone. But because it's three, it means Shay's included. Yeah. And that's the only reason why it was three. I mean, they want to just go off and say, well, no, 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 it's just three because we decided it was going to be three. They didn't tell you when they were going to decide it because they probably decided it week 11. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, there's too many queens with two stars, but when you introduce three stars, literally anyone can get them and get a secure spot in the finale. I do feel like uh, this whole idea of like somebody deserved a placement, it is a little contrived because you could make an argument for most of them that they deserved a spot in the top four, but then they just did not get it. Yeah, it would have been so much more fair if it was actually two stars and she was so close to being in the top two. Okay, but the name of the game is be in the top two not be the third best exactly like you're not just gonna throw a consolation prize oh you just missed out here's a participation medal yeah, exactly it's like it doesn't work that way there's a reason why the top two lip sync and get a start and then someone gets a blocker it's like if they wanted to be top three then it would be top three the way that i see this argument of she deserved more top two placements is like okay so if she deserved them why did she not get them exactly so if she was always the third best what kept her constantly not getting her to that you know second best or you know number one placement what i want to know is third for when the only one that comes to mind is the episode where they did the dolly parton runway watching it i was like okay so she's probably gonna you know be here in the top two and then i saw her runway and i was like no she shot herself in the foot her choices made her not be in the top two Next up, Shay's talent show song is the best true girl song. I think it is a really good song and I like the influence that she put in there, but I do have my other favorites. My all-time favorite drag race or you know, a rule girl song rather is Max's cover of Dance With You. Dance With You is my favorite RuPaul song. I mean, there aren't many, but I think it's such a beautiful song. I like the lyrics, I like the sound of it. And then I think just Max, I don't want to say sings it better, but I prefer Max stone to RuPaul's stone so that's my favorite uh, Ru Girl song but from the non-covers it would probably be Alaska's The Tea mm -hmm. because of the lyrics mostly and because of the vibe of the song. Exactly. Well I would prefer if RuPaul would stop singing. Um, I do like Cher's song. I mean I have been listening to it and also her newest song that's come out called Let Go. They're nice and they're like chills music they're up there but they're not mm -hmm. the best i think my favorite one is the one that violet did with aliax i did want to include this here just so we could talk a little bit about you know rule girl music but yeah it was a nice song she makes good music but i will give it that the judging panel especially michelle and ross needs to be changed they need fresher younger and funnier energy on the panel honestly get nicole byer or lonnie love to be a permanent judge or even bob or alaska if Ru gets over the fact that she should be the only drag queen i would like to see it i agree 
to an extent. I don't like the hilarious Ross Matthews. Same. Or fashion stylist Carson Kresley, but they should be changed. I think really it should be changed maybe every so often. But I do like Michelle, but sometimes it's like when she says stuff, it's like you're saying it based on preference. And sometimes when you do it, it steps on people's art. I like Michelle being there because of her dynamic with RuPaul. I really love their chemistry. Ross and Carson, I just like, why? Honestly, and I don't know how unpopular this opinion may be, but why not bring Merle back as the fashion judge? Like, if you go rewatch seasons one and two, the critiques that she was giving, I was like, you know what you're talking about. Like, you exactly. know your shit. I like it because it was like back in season two when Jessica Wilde was on it. She had such a different style to everyone else. And Mel still managed to give critiques to a point where it wasn't like, well, you don't look like anyone else. It still yeah. was like trying to tailor it to perfection, but still has style. I also like this when they talk about like Bob in Alaska, if Rue ever gets over the fact that she should be the only drag queen. I mean, I've been watching Canada's and Vanji and Jimbo when they've been judges because they're in that profession. They actually give valid criticism. Yeah. It's like, it's not harmful. It's a good idea to have people who were on the show or actually are a drag queen to give critiques for drag queens. Yeah, I think it would be maybe a nice sort of change of pace to have the person that won a season be a guest judge in the next season. Oh, yeah. Because you're essentially telling them, like, this is how I won a season. This is what you should be doing. But then again, I do like the idea of Nicole Byer being there. She just cracks me up. Mm -hmm. I, she's so fucking funny. And Bob, Alaska, either one of them, if Rue ever retires, yeah, one of them should definitely take his place. Yeah, I thought, like, this All-Stars might have been, like, a selection of who gets to replace her. Same! But then when seeing the people who were on it, I was a bit like... Who mm. would be, like, the Michelle and Rue? So for Jinx, it would be Dela, I guess? Yeah. Bob and Monet, Alaska and Willem, which that would be... <laughs> that would... As much as I would love that to happen, it would never... Never. It would be so chaotic. I think this is the last one. Yeah, the last one reads, This season needed more twists. <laughs> Since there were only two twists with the stars, it made them feel random and rigged to favor certain queens. I think one or two more twists, like the ability to steal a star or block immunity, etc., would have given the season more stakes. When no one goes home, yeah, why not? Because every single episode is the exact same. So I, I guess so. The thing to steal a star, why not? The whole star uh, system, whatever, it was taken from Survivors all winter season where they had like fire tokens, which was also sort of like a, just something that you can buy advantages with. So what mm. if like you could be like, okay, so I'm going to exchange a star for immunity from getting, or not exchange, but maybe like, I don't know, something where you have to give your star for something. Or like in the end, you're like, okay, you're you can be in the finale or you can compete in this challenge if you have two stars. It felt a bit like, what's something that we can come up with that still means that they have to compete for something, but they don't feel invalidated by like getting eliminated? Because the last thing they really want to do is like put a queen over another queen. But yet again, if there's a winner, you're doing that anyway. So yeah. why don't you just send them home? To end this, I just want to ask you, how would you rate this season like in comparison to all of the other All-Star season? And let's say out of 10, how, how many stars would you give it? It was fine. It just went downhill. It, every week was the same. I love the people who were on it. But how boring. I prefer fucking All-Stars 1 to this shit because of how chaotic and shit it was. <laughs> this was the shit because it was boring. Wait, so which two seasons do you think were worse than All-Stars 7? All-Stars 5 and Four. All-Stars. I'm going to be annoying. All-Stars 6. Yeah, I mean, I see that. All-Stars, more like everyone who's been on it again, go on it again. Also, yeah, it's not even All-Stars. It's like the person we want to win and then filler. Exactly, Juju B put it great. Some stars. Oh, I miss Juju B. I would probably give it five legendary legend stars out of ten. I'm gonna be a little more uh, generous and give it six. It lost three stars in the eleventh episode for me, so you know. Life's not fair.